Hey guys, Meteor Brothers, Chris Tomer here with this Friday morning mountain weather update on this first day of November. Let me take you to where it's snowing, and there it is. That's up in Whistler, Blackcomb up there in BC. We've got good snow coming down up there. This is our next storm system, and let me show you radar. Pretty broad area of rain and snow. Snow for the high Cascades, the high volcanoes, Baker, Rainier, Stevens Pass, all the way down to parts of Oregon. And you can see the snow falling up on the coastal range up there into parts of BC. And some of this is going to make it into the interior parts of BC as well. So the track of this storm system, let me talk about it. Where is it headed? Here's water vapor. And on this, or the oranges and the red colors are your drier air aloft. So what we're looking for is the moisture and it's right here. Here's our next storm system, the one I just showed you. So it's got that big area of precip out ahead of it. The track of this storm will take it close to the Sierra, but not quite. And then it will take a right hand turn, or it'll take a right turn and begin to spread all that snow through the interior states, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, 11-2, 11-3, and 11-4. As it drops to the south, it'll probably brush the Sierra with some very light snow. What's behind it? Got a pretty big storm system right here. This is gonna send initially out a, a cold front out ahead of it, which will come in behind that storm system and drop straight south with much colder air through the inner mountain. That happens and on the back side, the energy is gonna cut off over the four corners and it will come back over Colorado, New Mexico, like 11.7, 11.8 with potentially major implications. So we'll look at all that in the forecast here today. Here are my bullet points this morning. So it's basically what we just talked about. Current storm system 11, 2, 3, and 4 it comes through the inner mountain. Then the cold from behind it comes in fast, 11, 5, 11, 6, colder air. Sets the stage because the back side of it gets cut off. I'll show it to you on the jet. Gets cut off 11, 7, 8, and 9, coming back through New Mexico and Colorado with potentially major snowfall uh, accumulations in those areas. Here is the, uh, the snow timeline as I see it this morning. For the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, and Tahoe, you can see the dates potentially of snow accumulation in uh, those major ranges. Here's the time height forecast for the San Grita Cristo Mountains of Colorado, the extreme southern mountains of Colorado, which kind of bleed down into northern New Mexico. Um, this is uh, the humidity in the atmosphere through all the vertical layers, a slice, and the timeline's at the bottom. You read it from right to left, next 72 to 80 hours, basically, into the future. It's all dry air through this weekend. Um, but then, by the time we get into the third, the fourth, storm system moves in. You can see the green increasing from all the way from the, the ridge, ridge lines, the mountaintops, to probably 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. So that is our next shot of snow for the sand grays. And I'm showing you the sand grays for a very specific reason, and you'll notice it coming up here in a second. All right, here is the jet stream forecast by close of business today. You can see the dip in the jet. That is our next storm system in the Pacific Northwest. Dive south, look at the trough. This is prime time on the 3rd, moving through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and into New Mexico. And then the low intensifies, 3-4. Um, November 3-4. You can see it kind of spinning up in southeast Colorado. The trough is there in northern New Mexico. So we could be looking at some higher accumulations if this happens. Some enhancement of the snow, some pretty good lift. Uh, as a result. So then that storm eventually moves away, um, and here comes the cold front right there. Now on the back side, watch the cutoff right there develop over the four corners. So you think you're done, and then you're not, because here comes the storm, moves right over the same areas, New Mexico, Colorado, and it hangs there through 11.9. So this is very uh, interesting. All right, here is the forecast radar in satellite. By 5.30 this afternoon, here comes the precip. And it will brush the Sierra, a little bit of snow. Here comes the snow into the inner mountain. So this is Sunday in the morning, 5 in the morning. You've got snow through Montana, B.C., uh, Big Sky, Yellowstone, Tetons, uh, Utah, all the way north and south through the, all the way down to Bryan Head. You've got snow in Colorado and along the western slope. And then that intensifies in Colorado. Now, this is an important time period right here. This is Monday in the morning early. So what's going to happen is the snow will intensify in the mountains of Colorado and it's going to intensify in the foothills of Colorado and across the Palmer Divide. Areas above 6,000 feet will get several inches of accumulation. In Denver proper, probably rain over to snow, maybe some light accumulations, lots of melting. You'd have to go above 6,000. But nonetheless, you're still going to get a little bit. Snow all the way down to Taos, Ski Santa Fe, um, 
and then I actually have a friend who's getting married in Santa in, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, my good friend Ryan. So uh, I've been looking at this forecast for that area uh, pretty closely, uh, and it looks like we'll probably have rain moving into uh, Santa Fe Sunday night and changing over to snow into Monday morning. Okay, here we go into 11:4 in the afternoon. You can see the storm is it's still there. Uh, it's it's hard to shake even in the afternoon. Then it moves away. Here comes the cold front diving in from the north. It's all snow. The air is much colder. Snow through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, the Wasatch, the High Uinta, and moves into Colorado. Now this is going to be accumulating pure accumulation for a lot of Colorado, including Denver and all of the Front Range. Not going to be worried about rain with this. It's all snow. So this will be several inches of accumulation if it happens like this. And then that moves, and it's still there, but it dives down into southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. And most of the time when this happens, it moves away. You forget about it, and it's over. Not this time. Watch what happens. Sits there, re-intensifies, spins up, and moves back to the north. So it sits and spins for potentially 24 hours with additional snow accumulation over um, all the big ski areas of northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, and then it comes back north with a secondary shot or push with, with potentially major implications here, and it takes another day for that thing to move through. All right, let me show you snow. All of today through tomorrow. So it's the storm that's in the Pacific Northwest right now that eventually spreads snow over the interior. The snow you see through the Tetons, Big Sky, and the Wasatch, that happens on 11-2. That's 11-2, late in the day. A little bit of snow for the Sierra, a couple inches. The bigger snows are in the Pacific Northwest and B.C. So the second time period is quite significant. And what you notice right away is the bullseye in Colorado and northern New Mexico. Anywhere in pink, purple is over a foot. That's a lot of territory, a lot of acreage. Looking at a couple of feet potential there for Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire. Um, now, that assumes perfection. That assumes that not only with the first, with the cold front, we get a low that spins up, but then it does come back, that secondary low, and it sits and spins and comes back over the same area. So you, you kind of get this, this training effect of, of snowfall or precipitation over the same areas for like two or three days. Um, and big numbers up on the Continental Divide, Colorado, Front Range High Peaks could see a foot or two, assuming perfection. Um, another seven to eight for the Wasatch, another four to six for the Tetons, Yellowstone, Big Sky. And some nice numbers up through B.C., especially right along the coast, a foot or more through parts of Washington. Um, so a lot to talk about on this map. Um, this will be a really uh, fascinating time period. Let me take you back to the first period. Um, this is all of today through tomorrow. And then... Here's the second period, 11-3 um, through 11-10. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it on this Friday. Take care and have a great day.